If you're a healthcare professional treating varicose veins and you treat the small saphenous vein by endothermal ablation, this video is for you. Imagine your patient complaining of permanent numbness and burning pain down their leg after a routine varicose vein treatment. Well, this is the devastating reality of sural nerve injury. And frankly, what I'm about to tell you is shocking. In a recent poll I ran among fellow vein specialists, a staggering one in two, in fact, over 50% admitted that they don't routinely image the sural nerve before small saphenous vein endothermal ablation. Are you one of them? Well, in this video, I reveal the crucial step you're missing. Plus, I'll show you the incredible affordable technology I use to visualize this critical nerve and it fits in my pocket. And be sure to stay to the end where I will give you my secret tip for safer vein ablation of the small saphenous vein, avoiding the sural nerve. Now for years I've been passionate about safe and effective vein treatment. And that's why the results of my recent LinkedIn poll hit me quite hard. I was surprised. Knowing that so many specialists aren't routinely visualizing the sural nerve before small saphenous vein ablation is deeply concerning to me. It echoes the warnings I shared in my video over a decade ago. Today, I want to not only update that crucial advice, but also show you how incredibly accessible the solution is. Think about one of your patients. Let's call her Sarah. She came in for a simple small saphenous vein ablation, hoping to get rid of her varicose veins. But afterwards, she developed relentless burning pain and numbness down the side of her leg and into her foot. It affects her sleep, her ability to walk, her entire quality of life. This isn't a rare horror story. It's a real risk we must actively prevent. My earlier video highlighted that nerve injury can occur in nearly one in 20 small saphenous vein ablation treatments. That's one patient too many. Let's quickly recap how this damage occurs. As I explained in my previous video, there are two main culprits. Firstly, direct trauma from the needle during vein access or local anesthetic injection. Second, heat spreading from the ablation device to the nearby nerve. Now, why is this so risky? Well, it's because the sural nerve's path is anything but predictable. It might be next to the small saphenous vein, in front of it, or behind it. And here's a critical point. Where does the nerve get closest to the vein? It's often in the lower leg. In the upper calf, the deep fascia can offer some protection because the sural nerve lies deep. But distally, the nerve becomes very superficial and it lies right up against the nerve. So relying on a generic mid-calf approach, well, it's simply not good enough. Have you ever felt truly confident knowing where the nerve's exact location is? without seeing it? Why are so many skipping this vital ultrasound step? I don't know. To me, at least looking for the nerve seems like a no-brainer. Here are some potential reasons. Maybe the perception is that it adds too much time. Perhaps the variability and risk aren't fully appreciated. Perhaps there's over-reliance on those unreliable anatomical landmarks. Traditional machines can be expensive. But what if I told you high quality imaging is now incredibly affordable and portable? This is the Scan X Air. It's a wireless pocket ultrasound scanner. It's just one of many handheld or pocket wireless machines which connect to your phone or tablet. This little device, which, just so you know, I have absolutely no sponsorship deal here, this little device has been a game changer for me. It's affordable, incredibly portable, and the image quality is fantastic. And for those learning ultrasound, think about this. You can buy your own and practice identifying nerves and vessels on family and friends in the comfort of your own home. 
Imagine the confidence you'll gain. Other advantages include easy integration into any clinic setting without needing a dedicated room. Let me be crystal clear. In my opinion, pre-procedural ultrasound mapping is not optional. It's essential. Whether you're using a traditional machine like I did back 10 years ago, or a handheld device like this, visualizing the sural nerve before you even think about ablation is the cornerstone of patient safety. A detailed scan allows you to pinpoint exactly where the nerve pierces the deep fascia and to identify the unique risk point for each patient and choose a safe access site proximal to that danger zone. Remember, however, that seeing the nerve isn't the only step. Ultrasound guidance during tumescent anesthesia is vital and I prefer to do that in transverse section so I can see the vein and the nerve at the same time as I'm injecting and accessing the vein. When I do inject a tumescent anesthesia, I inject generously to create that protective barrier. It's called hydrodissection. And make sure you watch the nerve being pushed away on your screen. As I stressed in my earlier video, keep your eye on the needle tip, the vein and the nerve throughout the injection. This is paramount. If your patient reports sharp pain in the nerves distribution at any point, stop immediately. This real-time feedback, possible with local anesthesia, is a critical safety mechanism. Finally, always consider lower energy settings and non-thermal options when the nerve is close in proximity to the vein. And for me, ultrasound-guided foam sclerotherapy is the best option for the distal small saphenous vein. Now the fact that well over half of us aren't routinely imaging the sural nerve is a stark reminder that we who do have some work to do. But the good news is that with accessible technology like the newer wireless ultrasounds, there are fewer and fewer barriers to adopting this crucial safety measure. Let's make sural nerve visualization the standard of care not the exception. Now at the beginning I said I would share my secret tip for safer vein ablation. Here it is. Tell your patient well before the procedure to report any odd sensations in the sural nerve distribution. Not just pain, not just a burning sensation. Be explicit about tingling as well as burning or pain in the lower calf, heel or foot. Many patients think that pain during the procedure is normal. It's not. Emphasize to your patient that you want to know about any odd sensations in the sural nerve distribution. Now, are you ready to take the next step towards safer, small saphenous ablation? Download my free PDF guide for a deep dive into sural nerve anatomy, essential ultrasound techniques, and practical tips you can implement immediately. The link is in the description below. Together, let's commit to protecting our patients. What are your biggest challenges in incorporating nerve imaging? Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do consider giving it a like and sharing it. It really does help get my videos out there. And please consider subscribing. That way you won't miss my next video. Thank you for watching.